I'm going to read just a short passage from Lamentations chapter 3, verses 21 to 23. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And tonight I'm going to try to preach on this thought, echoes of the Father's mercy. Echoes of the Father's mercy. Now, turn to your neighbor and do your best Elvis impersonation and say, have mercy. Amen. Have mercy. Sister Shepherd, I'm so glad to see you tonight. And you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Sin is so debilitating. It is destructive. It'll take you down paths you never thought you'd go down. Mm -hmm. It'll lead you places you never intended on going. And it'll rip your family apart. It'll do things to you and to your loved ones that will have long-lasting effect. But I've come tonight to give you hope that mercy also has long-lasting, echoing effects in people's lives. The mercy of God will chase you down. Because David said his mercy and his truth. He talked about it was going to be there. It's his shield and his buckler. It's going to always be following after you. Goodness and mercy is going to follow you all the days of your life if you would just trust tonight in the mercy of the Lord. Paul wrote and said, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. I have come to tell you tonight, there is a sweet comfort in the mercy of God, but I have come to realize in my short span on this earth that it's not just about receiving the mercy of God, but it's also about giving mercy to other people. I look at somebody and tell them, I would rather err on the side of mercy. Go ahead and tell them, I would rather err tonight on the side of mercy. It's easy to be judgmental sometimes and critical and to look at people and say, well, if that was me. No, it's just good for you to be merciful, to show mercy. Because when you receive mercy from the Lord, He meant that you would extend that mercy to other people. He comforted us in our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted in by God. Do you have anybody in mind tonight that's in trouble? Do you yourself have a situation in your life and you've called out to God and said, Jesus, I'm in trouble. I've come to tell you tonight that His mercy is here right now. But all you have to do is say, Jesus, have mercy. And His mercy will come rushing to you to help you in your time of trouble. He said, all our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering, so shall ye be also of the consolation. This was Paul writing. He knew that if they would just 
understand that because they took part in the time of suffering, they would also be able to take part in a time of consolation. I know sometimes that the trials come. I know sometimes the tribulations come, sickness come. And, and when we call out for mercy, it's not always mercy because of sin. Sometimes it's mercy because life just gets hard. And we don't know if we can bear it any longer. But that's when you call out and say, Jesus, have mercy upon me. And like a gentle wind, he comes in and he gives you relief from your pressure. Now your pressure might be there in the morning, but there's something about knowing God is with me. He's on my right hand. He's on my left hand. It, it doesn't matter. Job said, it doesn't matter where I go, he's there. And he knows the way tonight that you take. You might think tonight that you've been forgotten by God, but God forgets nobody. He knows exactly where you are. All you need to do tonight is just say with a sincere and a passionate heart, Lord, have mercy upon me. And he will come rushing to you. Paul said he had sentence of death. We should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raised the dead. He, he, he was killed. Do you know that? That Paul actually was killed and persecuted, and yet people began to pray for him. And he said, who delivered us from so great a death and death deliver, and whom we trust that he will yet deliver to us? And he said that you prayed for us. You prayed for us that the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons may be given by many on our behalf. Mercy that we show is the mercy that we know. And when you see somebody needing your compassion and your love and you ask your mercy, then you need to give it to them. How many times we know of people in the church house tonight who receive the mercy of God Partly because the saints of God prayed on their behalf. It was a great testimony. I'm so thankful for Sister Annie being healed of cancer. And I know that that was partly the doctors, but it was partly the prayers of the saints of the Most High God that had compassion and prayed. Every time Jesus began to be moved with compassion, that was when you knew the miraculous was going to take place. That word compassion has to do with mercy and loving kindness. And if you want to see a real move of God in your life, you need to say, Lord, let me be motivated by mercy and let me be motivated by compassion. Now, I'll make a side note just to say that I'm not saying that we condone sin. I'm not saying that we allow unrighteousness to work in the church. I'm not saying that we allow the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, the world system to overtake the church. But what I'm saying is that if a brother, you see a brother or a sister overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, you need to restore that person considering your own self lest you fall into the same temptation. Because you know I have received mercy, I'm going to extend mercy. I'm going to extend mercy and even if I don't understand their situation, just in case someday I go through that. There is a just in case, you know that. Just in case. Yes, in meekness, considering yourselves. Be filled with loving kindness. The loving kindness of the Lord is here tonight to work in your life and in the life of your families. I know in this room there are people that are battling sickness. You know, enough people in here, we know that. I know in this room there are people who are battling uh, addictions. There are people who are battling sin in your life. I know somebody in here has to be battling some kind of strife at home, but I've come to tell you tonight that the God of mercy can come along and help you, and that mercy has a resounding effect. It echoes through time and space and does not Stop. He is the Father of mercies. He is the source of all mercy. Mercy proceeds from God. He is the one who has all mercy in his hands. He decides. And the Bible said that it is of the Lord's mercies because those mercies are renewed every day. Every day you get a fresh load of benefit of mercy from God. Every day. All throughout the book of Psalms, 
13 times. And the Gospels, 13 times. There is that phrase, have mercy. So turn to your neighbor one more time and just say, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. That's the sincere prayer of a heart crying out for God's compassion. Have you ever prayed it? Have you ever said, Lord, have mercy? I, I have to confess, I've, I've, I've cried out that prayer at times. There have been times there was no other words I could say, but Jesus, have mercy upon me. In the book of Psalms, it said, Hear me when I call, O God of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. Another place, have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am weak. Have you ever felt weak tonight? And then he said, O Lord, heal me. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me. There are people that come against you sometimes, and you are overwhelmed with it. Sometimes it's people that you love that betray you. Sometimes it's people you work with that just don't like you, but mainly because some often it's because of the righteousness that comes from you that turns them away, and wants to, the enemy wants to destroy anything that's of God and righteous. And all that writer said was, Lord, have mercy upon me, because I'm dealing with people that hate me. He said, turn thee unto me and have mercy upon me, for I am desolate and afflicted. In another place he said, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. How many times do you want to answer from God? He said, Lord, if you just tell me what to do, I would do it. If you just show me how to go, I'd go that way. And then every once in a while you just realize, listen, I, if he never shows me. At least I know if he has mercy upon me, I can make it to the next day. I have mercy have mercy. He said, Lord, have mercy upon me. Be thou my helper. And then he said, have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. Mine eye is consumed with grief. And my soul and my belly, grief comes in sometimes. It racks you. It wrecks you. It makes things taste not as well as they used to taste. The sweetness of a cherry pie don't taste all that great. The relationships that you have with other people, it just doesn't feel that good because you're grieving the loss of somebody and you wonder, when will this grief ever end? And the psalmist said, Lord, have mercy upon me, for I am in trouble. Then he said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to the multitudes of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. O turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give my strength unto thy servant, and save the son of thine handmaid. Then he said, Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion. Zion's the church tonight. I want you to know that God has mercy upon the church. He is going to have compassion upon the church. And I know people are fearful right now about what's going on overseas and all that, but I don't care what's going on overseas. We're a part of the church of the living God, and God is going to have compassion upon us. He's going to have mercy upon us. You are the apple of His eye, and nobody dare touch the apple of the eye of the Lord. He said, Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until he have mercy upon us. That means that you are looking for mercy. When I pray and call out to God, I am looking for him to have mercy upon me, to have compassion and to see him move, not just in my life, but in the lives of other people. And then he said, have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy. I need mercy tonight. I need mercy every day. That's why he said every day there's a new, a new barrel full of mercy. And it comes from his compassion. It comes from his love for you. He said, I will have mercy, Jesus said. You need to go and understand what this scripture says in the book of Samuel. He said, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. God is not interested in the physical actions of burnt sacrifices, but he is instead interested in you being merciful and calling out in an act of mercy. God prefers an act of mercy. That's what he prefers. 
I've been the beneficiary of mercy. I remember one time I was in a squabble with a good friend of mine. and My heart began to be bitter and resentful about it. In fact, I walked on the other side of the church. I hate to admit it, I wasn't very mature at that time. And finally, he, the mature one, came to me and said, Steve, let's talk. And we went back into another portion of the church, and he asked me what was wrong. And I began to realize right then there was nothing wrong except my own weakness, my own bitterness, my own resentment, my own anger. And instantly, I asked him to forgive me. He didn't come to me with judgment. He didn't come to me with unkindness. He didn't come with a tongue lashing out at me. No, he came with love, and he came with mercy. You're going to get a whole lot more from those around you if you go with them with sugar than if you go with them with sour vinegar. Learn to display mercy. The whole sacrificial system of the Old Testament was only pointing us to the infinite mercy of God. It wasn't about the animals. It wasn't about the sacrifice. They were types and shadow of something greater to come, but it was about the mercy of a God who would send His Son in, the, in, in, in flesh, who would die upon a cross at Calvary, because we know what the Bible says, that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. It was the mercy of God that caused Him to come, to put on a robe of flesh, to be a man so that he could walk and talk among you and die on a cross at Calvary so that you're, you could receive redemption and you could receive mercy tonight. I love the mercy of God. How, how his ways, the Bible says, are past finding out. You cannot find out what God will do. God will do things that you never even began to realize. And the Bible says that there were two men one day sitting by the wayside. And when they heard that Jesus was passing by, they cried out saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of David. And the people said, Shh, be quiet. Leave the Master alone. They want you to hold your peace. And the Bible says they cried out the more saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou Son of of David. Sometimes your need will push you beyond your limits. Sometimes your need will push you past the societal niceties. Sometimes your need will cause you not to care what anybody else thinks and it'll make you run. Run to an altar and fall down on your knees and cry out to God saying, Jesus, have mercy upon me. So when was the last time that you called out for mercy? When was the last time you sought God with an authentic heart. And you open yourself up to Him. We're so busy. We are so busy going to and fro. We got so much going on that we don't take the time to get alone with Jesus. And the Bible said, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. To find that secret place, you need to steal away from everybody and everything and find yourself talking to just Jesus. You ought to go home in the next day or two when, you have, when you're by yourself, put a chair in front of you and, 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 and talk to that chair as if Jesus Christ is sitting in that chair. You pour out your heart to Him. You pour out everything you need to Him and let Him hear what you have to say and then stop and listen to what comes to you after that. What comes to your mind will be words that will give you direction in your life because it will be the mercy of God extended to you as you approach Him in an act of humility and an act of authenticity and in an act of love because I love you, Jesus, and I trust you, and I'm going to take this to the one I know who can do all things and help me in my calamity because I need your mercy. There's only one time where Jesus talked about mercy that could not be granted, and that was the rich man who was in hell. He lifted up his eyes. He saw Abraham. He saw Lazarus in Abraham's bosom. And he asked Abraham, he said, Father Abraham, would you let Lazarus come down here and dip his finger in some water just to cool my tongue, because I am in torment, and I am burning in these flames. And Abraham said, I can't do that. There's a gulf fixed between us. 
The only time, friend, that you cannot call out for mercy is when you're dead. Someday, every knee is going to bow and someday every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And either you do it now or you're going to do it in the judgment. But I come to tell you tonight, do it now. Call out to God for mercy now. Receive His blessing now. Don't wait until He can say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. And then he said, okay, Abraham, if you could, just send him to talk to my brothers. I think he said Moses, send Moses to talk to my brothers. And, and, and the, the Abraham said, I, I couldn't do that, I can't do that. He said, because they wouldn't even hear Moses and the law and the prophets. It doesn't matter if one was raised from the dead and went to... There are some people that never know how to call out for mercy. What a sad state it would be to get to the place where you don't know how to call out for the mercy of God. But the blind beggar did. The Bible said he cried saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And in his story, there were people that said, hold your peace. But he said he cried so much the more, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Blind Bartimaeus sat by the roadside one day and they said, Jesus is coming. And he began to cry out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. It's time for you to let go of your pride. It's time for you to call out for the mercy of God and say, Jesus, have mercy. I know it may not sound like it, but I'm preaching a message of hope tonight. I'm I'm preaching you a message tonight that will save your soul if you'll learn to apply it to your life. If you'll learn to call upon the mercy of God any time you need Him, you know that He's going to hear me. I'm not talking about a false mercy. I'm not talking about a God who extends it and then pulls it back and says, I was just kidding. No, this God, when He extends you mercy, He is the only wise, He's the only true God. He will grant you mercy in your life. I'm talking about the echoes of the Father's mercy. Look at Isaiah chapter 58, verses 10 and 12. If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light arise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in draught. And make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee, that's your children, that's those that are following after you, they're going to build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of paths to dwell in. If you tonight would just understand that when you grant mercy to people, Draw out thy soul to the hungry. Satisfy the afflicted soul. Show mercy to those around you. Then God has said in his word here in the book of Isaiah that eventually that echoes through your family. It'll echo through time as they remember the time that you gave it all to Jesus. You showed mercy and you are a recipient of that mercy over. And it just echoes back and forth in the cavern of your own family if you learn how to show mercy to people. Because not only will God show mercy to you as you show mercy to other people, but they will also extend mercy to, their, to your family and to your children and those that are far off. Like the book of Acts said, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. I've been living for the Lord now since 1979. That's when I was a young boy and received the gift of the Holy Ghost and was baptized in Jesus' name. I would like to tell you that when I began to preach, it was because people recognized something in me, but it wasn't anything in me they recognized at that time, Brother Harper. It was because of a man called Edwin E. Kuntzman who showed mercy to young preachers, who showed compassion to other people. And they would come to me and said, I really enjoyed your grandfather. I really respected him. You know, he had a love for the ministry. He had a love for the men of God. And because of that, they invited me to preach in their churches and then extended the invitations came because of what happened after that. But I've come to tell you, the mercy of God was shown to me, not because of anything I did, but because of my my ascendants, those who became before me, who said, I'm going to live for God and I'm going to do right by people. And God said, because you did that, 
There's going to be an echo of my mercy, not just in your life, but in the life of your sons and your grandsons and your great-grandsons. Why? Because of the mercy that was shown by a little German Jew named Edwin. (laughs) Hallelujah. God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us. That's the Father of mercies. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places together in Christ Jesus. I want to tell you right now, when you come to this place of worship, and we, the body of Christ, the church, worship with each other, God has allowed us to sit in heavenly places with each other in Christ Jesus. You want to get a glimpse of what heaven looks like? Spend time around the church. Spend time around the people of God. Spend time in worship with them. Be faithful in attendance. You can come here on our regularly scheduled nights. You can go to conferences. You can go to a North American Youth Conference or you can go to a general conference, wherever you go. But that's what heaven, a little portion of what heaven's going to be like is when we come together begin to worship God together because we, the recipients of mercy, begin to worship the God and the Father of mercies and that echoes throughout eternity when we get up into heaven. It says that in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ. That's the echoes of mercy. For by grace you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. I and you tonight do not merit His mercy. I've never done one thing to deserve the mercy of God. I could never be good enough to deserve His mercy, but He loves me because He is a God of love, and He is a God of mercy, and it's just how He does things. I can't figure it out. If I was God, I would not have mercy upon Stephen Koonsman, but thank God I am not God tonight because He has mercy. He said, I'm going to have mercy upon whom I'm going to have mercy. He said, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Walk in them. Walk in the good work tonight of mercy. Give mercy. Grant mercy. Pray mercy for mercy. Love mercy. I know judgment's there. I know that mercy and truth are met together. I know all about that, but I know that mercy is far above that. Amen. The law came by Moses, the Bible said, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. There is a grace. There is a mercy. There is a truth. The Lord loves you, and He has died for you. Look at your neighbor again. Just tell them, have mercy. Mercy. I need mercy. I need mercy tonight. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me through thee from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my sin. I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in sin and iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness that thou, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins. Blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Here's the echo of mercies. 
Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God. Thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. Thou, thou, for thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering, whole burnt offering. Then shalt thou offer bullocks upon thine altar. Right now is a good time to come to the altar. Right now is a good time to come down here and pray. I'm not saying that you have sin. Some of you do. Or else I wouldn't be preaching this message. But what I am saying is you need mercy. You need God's compassion. Maybe you need a healing in your body. Maybe you need to be uh, God to restore your family's relationship. Maybe tonight you need a financial miracle. I don't know what it is, but I'm asking you tonight to come to this altar right now and come and pray. Kneel before the Lord your maker and call out for his mercy. Would anybody be brave enough to say, I, I'm like the, the blind beggars. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what anybody else does. I'm going to come to the altar and I'm going to pray. I'm going to say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Come and call out to him and let him hear your voice tonight. Let him hear what you have to say and say, Jesus, I'm going to give it to you. I've given it to you so many times. But I'm asking you to have mercy one more time. In Jesus' name. Come on down tonight. Come on down tonight. Come down to this altar tonight. Meet the Father of mercies and let the echo of mercy reverberate in your life. I need your mercy. I need your grace. Yeah.